Welcome in everyone to another edition of Argo Sports Insider. I'm your host, Will Kennedy. We've got an interesting show this week for you. We are wrapping up potentially some winter sports, although we're still waiting to see what's going to happen when it comes to potentially some NCAA tournament bids for men's and women's basketball. We're into spring sports, of course, baseball and softball rolling along. Tennis and golf, they're getting going. And of course, swimming and diving. The NCAAs are coming up this week ahead of us, so lots to talk about. We'll start right here in the field house in the University of West Florida in Pensacola, Florida. We'll talk basketball. The UWF women's team got to host a first round GSC tournament game, bringing in an opponent from Delta State that they had a great game against back in January. This one they got on the court. It really was one of those tough kind of nights for UWF as the number four seed taking on the number five seed. And, it just didn't go well from the beginning. Chasing Delta State and the Lady Statesman the entire game, despite Jacqueline Jarnett's tremendous performance, the first team all GSC performer went for 20 points and 10 plus rebounds. Zoe Pillar, who was the GSC freshman of the year, ended up in double figure scoring wise, but had to sit with some foul trouble. And in the end, it was Delta State walking away with a 12 point victory. 19 wins on the season for the UWF women's team. We talked to coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton after the game. Obviously disappointed, you know, with our loss tonight. We came into the game knowing that this was going to be a very physical game, that we were going to have to execute offense, that we were going to have to really will our way uh, into the paint and uh, will our way to score tonight. We knew that we were also going to have to knock down outside perimeter shots. That's just the type of defense that Delta State plays. You know, there's no there's no secrets to how they play, and uh, we just you know we couldn't get things clicking on the offensive end of the floor. I thought we were passive in the first half, and that obviously related to a lot of missed uh, shots and missed opportunities. Um, and then I thought we really started fighting in the second half, but. Uh, still, just the ball just from long range did not fall for us tonight. I think we were 8% from the, from the three-point line. And, uh, you know, that's really the name of the game. We shot 23 of those shots. And so uh, when those aren't falling uh, regularly for us, uh, we, we really struggle. There were moments where uh, we had momentum um, and all of a sudden we had a momentum buster that happened. You know, whether it was we gave up an offensive rebound or we fouled someone with two seconds on the shot clock or, uh, you know, we didn't convert on an on a open play or we had a silly turnover that was unforced. But I thought we had uh, seven or eight of those tonight were just momentum busters. And, uh, you know, that was really unlike our team. We haven't had those in a long time. And uh, today we had multiples of those. And I thought that contributed uh, to the loss. I would give a lot of the credit to Delta State. I mean, I thought they came in with a tenacity, with a with a go get itness um, that we didn't match, especially in that first half. And uh, and I just thought we got down by too much. And then the second half, we really tried to dig in and start fighting back. We just could not get out of that hole. We had opportunities where we cut it to five or we cut it to seven, you know, got it down in single digits, and all, all of a sudden those momentum changes happened, and uh, and we just couldn't get it uh, closer than that. We're super proud of where we finished this season. You know, we doubled our wins from last season. We surpassed our win total from the last two seasons. I mean, although we'd love to be playing and getting on a bus and going to Birmingham this weekend, um, we can't, you know, negate the hard work that was put in, uh, the wins that we got early in the season, you know, beating teams that we didn't necessarily maybe weren't supposed to beat at the time, and then really beating people that we needed to beat to kind of stay where we were. But for us to be uh, the fourth seed and hosting this game, tonight a huge step for our program you know uh, big changes and so I'm super proud of our team for um, weathering that storm and uh, putting us in a position to be successful this year um, but I think you know the sky's the limit for us we know what we need as a coaching staff for next season to really um, put ourselves back as a national contender uh, we know there's some gaping holes in our roster that we've got to fill and uh, you know we're going to work hard to make that happen and that's that's our goal that's our coaching staff's goals I think that's our players goal goals are to get the program back in that national spotlight and I thought this season was a big step towards that. The rest of the GSC tournament will take place up in Birmingham over the weekend. Unfortunately, the UWF women will not be there and they'll have to wait and see. It's maybe a long shot. Can they get into the NCAA tournament? But nothing is written in stone yet. The men had to travel, leaving the friendly confines of the field house here. They went up to Lee to take on the number three seed as the number six seed and uh, kind of the story of many games in the back half of the season. The Argos falling behind, having to chase from behind, 
putting on a great uh, comeback attempt in the end, but coming up a little short. Dan Sofield leading the way. Of course, the GSC first team all-conference selection had a fantastic season, leading the team in scoring better than 17 points a game, but just not enough firepower to pull out the victory. So the Argos season may have ended at 18 wins as they lose to Lee on the road. That tournament continues up in Birmingham as well, and the Argos will have to hold their breath and see if there's an outside chance, depending on what happens around the rest of the region, could they get Get into the NCAA tournament. We had the chance to talk to Coach Jeff Burkhammer after the loss at Lee. Well, we didn't play real well early and got down and probably just got down too far. But I loved our fight and I loved how hard we worked uh, to get back in the game and really had chances to win the game. We missed a couple open threes and shots just didn't go in. Had a couple calls go against us late. Uh, and they made a couple shots that they had to have. And uh, really proud of our effort. I thought we played very, very hard. Uh, in the second half and really had a chance to get back in the game and really a chance to win the game. I was really happy for Jackson Hittingfield in his last game to, to play that well, score 27 points and really dominate the game in the second half down inside. Uh, I was really excited for him and, and glad he got to finish his career uh, really, really playing well in a big game. Uh, Daniel's been terrific. I mean, he's just a great kid, a hard worker. Uh, he's very deserving of being first team all conference. Uh, just a terrific player. And, uh, he's continued to add to his games, continue to get better and better. And, and he'll have two, two more great, great years with us. And I think eventually he'll be a Hall of Fame guy at, uh, at West Florida. Well, we had a great start. We really played well early. Um, ran through some, some tough times uh, late in the year. We didn't play bad. We just didn't maybe play quite good enough to, to beat some of the better teams and lost some close games. But, you know, overall, I was really happy with our players, happy with our guys. And you know, we kept fighting, kept working together, and stayed together to finish the year. You know, that's what you want. You want to have guys fight at the end of the year for each other. I think we did that. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Let's turn our attention now to just down the road a little ways at the Fork and the Spoon where baseball and softball have been rolling to start the season. The home cooking, awful good for both of those teams. The UWF softball team back in the top 25, ranked number 19 in the country and coming off a sweep over the weekend of Shorter. Coach Ashley McLean's team has now won eight straight games. They are 11 and three on the season. And how about that shorter series? Doing it at the plate, doing it from the circle, not giving up anything as far as runs are concerned. And Montana Young, in, in one of the games on Saturday in a doubleheader, throws a perfect game, the first one since 2015 as she was dealing from the circle. Offensive pop all the way around the lineup. Maddie Vasquez, the transfer, had a big weekend, a couple home runs, lots of RBIs on the board, and it was pure celebration as the Argos get three victories. We talked to Coach after the wins. I thought it was a great weekend. You know, we had a perfect game from Montana. Kelsey threw a two-hitter and Jaya threw a three-hitter, and that's a huge outing for our pitching staff um, and our hitters. You know, always that second time through the lineup, they just took care of business. Coming out of the weekend with three run rolls is a fun weekend for a home series. So. I'm excited for this team. I'm excited to see what else we can bring to this conference and um, we'll be on the road next week and to see what we have. I'm excited to play them. You know, I'm kind of ready. I'm going to go home and do some homework on them because, you know, they took a game from MC yesterday and they got that new coach in and she's starting to get her recruits in and they're going to be tough. They're always tough with us anyways. Um, so I'm ready to see if we can shut them down. Yeah, I threw a perfect game in high school, but obviously this was my first one in college, so it was a pretty big deal. So this one definitely was exciting. My team was behind me and high school, yeah, it's good, but being here, the, there's good hitters and it just feels good. I know at practice, we've been really harping on um, adjusting like HGBs, hard ground balls, and it's like really satisfying to know that the work that like as a team we've been putting in to finally execute, you know, not just popping up and getting line drives and base hits. I know as like a freshman and we have like a whole bunch of new freshmen, a whole bunch of transfers, like the first two weeks we're kind of just uh, dusting off the dust basically and so now that we're getting in our groove it's really awesome to have the teammate back me like my teammates back me up and have these hits just go crazy our bat our lineup like it's not just me it's all nine of us so it's crazy 
Argos perfect in GSC play, 6-0 now, and they'll take that on the road to take on Christian Brothers this coming weekend. Baseball had a big series with Shorter over the weekend, bringing in uh, you know, one of the surprise teams in the GSC last year, but Shorter returning a lot of talent. And, of course, the Argos for Coach Mike Jeffcoat, mixing it up a little with a lot of new faces in the lineup. It was an interesting series, a Friday single game, a doubleheader on Saturday. The Friday night game goes 11 innings of 1-1 baseball, and then Shorter breaks it open in the end and gets the series opening win. So the Argos needed to bounce back on Saturday with some good performances. They certainly did that. Lots of runs on the board in game one on Saturday as the Argos pull out a big win. And then a huge pitching matchup in the series finale Saturday afternoon, and Tyler Dowdy, the Bulldog, goes out there, gets it done. The Argos pull out the victory in game three, get the series win two games to one. Things are flipping around after a rough start to the season. The Argos are rolling now. We talked with Coach Mike Jeffcoat after the series W. Very quality, shorter team. Knew we were going to have our hands full this weekend. Had a battle last night, you know, 12 innings. Both teams wanted it. Thought we had some opportunities. Ninth, 10th, 11th, didn't get it done. Didn't bunt well last night. Today we bunted really well. We moved runners when we needed to. Uh, hits were in a premium in this second game. Uh, their pitcher's been in this league four years, and he's a tough nut to crack. And, you know, we were able to scratch some runs off of him there in the first inning. That was huge. Uh, got his pitch count up, um, you know, and had some quality at bats. And, you know, just obviously swinging the bats in that first game compared to what we did last night was big for us. And, you know, just being able to come out here for eight hours uh, with our backs against the wall, already losing the first game, and, you know, being able to hold it together there for this second game, it's big for this team. We talk about quality at bats. We had some quality barrels. Of course, you know, their guy is going to definitely, uh, Pantera is going to strike some guys out. He's got great stuff. And, uh, you know, he made it tough on some of them at bats. But I saw some grind at bats. We had some seven, eight pitch at bats. We ran some counts deep, drew some walks out of him, uh, which, again, got his pitch count up. But like you say, our lineup's pretty balanced. Uh, and we've got guys that are doing their job up and down, trying to use a lot of different guys, change the lineup up just a little bit and move some guys around. But uh, you know, overall, just proud of their energy, the guys supporting them in the dugout. You know, we went back to back with Estes and Lawson first game and Lawson in the second game did a great job. I mean, both those guys, you know, coming out of the pen for us. We got other guys, but, you know, we wanted to go with guys we know we trusted right there at that moment. Hey, we have confidence in our starters and we're not going to overpower anybody, but they're going to change speeds. They're going to throw strikes. Our defense knows that. They're going to be on their toes. I think that's been part of the reason why our defense has been so good. Uh, we're filling the strike zone up and changing speeds. They know they're going to get the ball hit to them. Um, and that plays a part of what we want to do here. We want to pitch and play defense and get back in the dugout and you saw Tyler get us back in pretty quick some of those innings as well as D-Law and Esty. so you know it was key for us and you ho hope those guys stay healthy and keep giving us those quality starts and we'll see what we can get out of the pen. I got a chance to get on the road at Rollins uh, but yeah now we got to go to Christian Brothers first in West Alabama uh, you know traveling on the road it's always tough in conference play I think Christian Brothers beat Mississippi College last night can't take anybody lightly uh, we got to have another good week of preparation and you know, get ready to get on the road. So Coach Jeff Coat and the Argos improve overall to 7-5 and five on the season, but 5-1 and one in conference play. They are at Christian Brothers this coming weekend as well. And then a couple of midweek games, Southern Indiana will be down on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Of course, if you're from Southern Indiana, why wouldn't you want to come to the beaches here in Florida for a little spring break baseball? So we'll be keeping an eye on that for you next weekend as well. Tennis underway. We talked about the men on last week's show going to the indoor championships uh, out in Indianapolis. The women took their trip out there this last weekend. A couple tough losses in their matches, but a good way to start the season and kind of get your feet wet playing. Men's golf will be back in action. Coach Steve Fell's team, one of the best in the country. They're at the at a tournament out in Las Vegas coming up this week, so we'll have updates on that for you on the next show. And then swimming and diving. Hard to believe it, but it's already time for the NCAAs. Those start this week up in Greensboro, North Carolina. The diving, I believe, starts on Tuesday. Swimming gets into the pool on Wednesday next week. So those are some big ones coming up. Uh, the Argos are busy training right over here in the Aquatic Center, getting ready for that and hoping to you know, put on a good showing and improve on last year's performance at the NCAAs. And who knows, who knows somebody may walk away with, a, with an NCAA title. So we've got a lot coming your way for the next show. We'll keep an eye on basketball and then, of course, baseball, softball, and everything else going on 
Remember, GoArgos.com is always your spot to check the latest schedules, the latest news, dive into team rosters and statistics, and the Argo Armada app on your phone or tablet. Lots of cool features in there. Take it with you to the games. It's just a great way to kind of keep track of social media and everything going on here with the University of West Florida Athletics. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Argo Sports Insider.